Well, hello there, YouTube. This is Mr. Gibson Guy. Thanks for coming by. Welcome to my channel. Um, if you're new here, uh, I really like you to hit the subscribe button and like a like button if you watch this video and you like it. Hopefully, you like it. Leave me a comment. And thanks for stopping by. I have a whole lot of videos. I've had this channel for quite a few years, and I have over 150 videos that I've put up on it. So if you find something interesting, you might want to check out my uh, channel. It's that orange letter M that you see on your screen. Hit that, and it'll take you to there. And you can scroll down and see all different playlists and different videos I've done. Today, uh, after having this channel for a long time, I was starting to come to the conclusion that I needed to upgrade a little bit. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> I had a Sony little handy cam video camera that I've been using for the last five or six years and put over a hundred videos up on it. And uh, it's okay, but uh, I've been doing a lot of... Uh, a lot of my videos and research in uh, photography and videography lately and I've started to come to the realization that this is okay for getting something started but I need to get a little bit more advanced to do some more work with the videos and have them come out better particularly I wanted to start putting some music on videos um, and I want it to be good quality recording and this video camera that I have this little Sony is not really what you would call um, high quality sound or video. I, I guess the video is okay on it, but uh, as far as the sound, it's not that not that exciting. I want to see if I can show you this because I've never shown anybody my video camera. But there it is. You see, it goes to the side like that. And it's just one of those really basic little video cameras up there. You use that, uh, use that mirror at the back of the display case there so you can see it. Um, so I have uh, uh, thought about what to do. And, and I had been learning a lot about uh, video and connections to digital photography. And finally, I came to the conclusion that I needed something that was going to give me some better sound quality and I researched and decided I was going to go with this uh, Rode VideoMic Go 2. That's what it says here. Uh, this is the box to it. And I was going to put that on this Nikon D5200 camera which you see right here. There's the mic with a shock mount. Goes into the hot shoe and then as a cord that you plug into the camera. Now, as far as this mic, as far as it goes, I was concerned because it was a uh, doesn't have two mics; it just has one. But the good news is, is that it it uh, it is a stereo, has a eighth inch stereo cord like that you can see so it's got two channels and apparently there's a split microphone inside of there it's a shotgun mic and uh, Rode is a very good name good name for sound reproduction pro audio stuff uh, some people might say well gee a D5200 is not the latest thing it's just a, a DSLR that goes around goes back some time and that's true, it is. But I can I want to uh, fill you in some more on this. The the 5200 was when Nikon first started to get up there in the higher higher um, what do you call it uh, the um, the pixels um, the, the it's um that's a 24 24 megapixel camera. Is that what's can't think of what the word is right now but uh, it's it's pretty good quality and of course it's older it's been around but the digital recording is pretty good and there's some other advantages that there are to this one now of course it's a it's a still digital camera first but can be used can switched over 
to be used in a video and uh, I took some time to figure it out and get it going right but I finally did get it going and it's made some very good videos the last couple of videos that I have um, up you see if you see my channel um, and the sound quality is greatly greatly improved which is what I wanted as you guys see these is mounted on shock mounts and everything so you can do it handheld I keep it on the tripod uh, for this and usually I would be using it the tripod with my little Sony here but I'm not uh, the, the I, I do a lot of research in photography and I kind of have a store on the side. I buy stuff and sell stuff and keep stuff and don't keep stuff and try to sell it and sell it or try not to sell it. So I have all kinds of different things going on there. Um, but I've researched prices a lot and so I looked up just recently the D5200 and it looks like uh, on uh, like a KEH resellers and stuff like that. It looks like it's going for about 250, 275, upwards of 300, just for the camera body. And now uh, this also has this. Uh, is this a DX lens? Is it? Yeah, this DX series lens. This is the kit lens that came with this camera, and. use my glasses here yes this is a 18 to 55 zoom here with uh, vibration control on it and uh, the I've started looking up some of the lenses that would go on the d5200 and they would be you know 60 bucks 90 bucks 120 bucks and go up from there and then I came across this particular lens. Yeah, this is the uh, that stop is th uh, 3.5 to 5.6 or something like that. I can't even read it from the side, but it's it's a pretty slow lens, and it's it's a consumer starter lens. And I think I saw this at KEH for like listed starting at like seventeen dollars or something like that so it's it's all plastic of course yeah, camera stuff plastic now not not the old metal stuff but uh, this this lens is not any big thrill see it's on manual yeah i can focus it it's got the switch there um but another advantage of the d-series cameras from nikon is that they can also use older Nikon lenses. Now, in my uh, studying into photography, which all verges right meshes together with videography these days, they're kind of combined. One of the real hot topics has been to take vintage film camera lenses and put them on digital cameras. Um, and with the Nikon, uh, the D5200, in my example, but with that, I can use just about all of my Nikon lenses, Nikkor lenses, like this, and I have quite a few of them. Yeah, I, I have, uh, you know, there's more cameras hiding behind the lenses there along here. I have eight Nikon cameras in my collection currently and that can change from day to day but I have have eight and I have seven uh, 50 millimeter Nikors, Nikkor lenses, uh, various ones and one camera that's left without right now and then I have eight more Nikors here so I have quite a few to choose from and these lenses almost all of them will go directly onto the D5200. Now there's a couple of uh, drawbacks to it. Uh, I have shoot them wide open because of uh, problems with uh, stopping down because the new cameras are not as mechanical as the old cameras. But it is possible, I think, to stop them down. Um, just hard to see until you take the exposure. Uh, <clears throat> but 
An advantage is that these lenses are very, very high quality lenses and they make some really wonderful images. That's what I got from there. So, um, let's see, I also have, have uh, an assortment, not just 50s here, plenty of those. Uh, this is a, the Nikon F2A has a 50 millimeter F2. And my F3, I have this uh, 50 millimeter 1.4 Nikkor. And then I got a pair of uh, 50 millimeter F1.8s on the, uh, the FE and the FA, they have matching lenses. And then on this old Nikkor Mat EL, this has uh, one of the old, old uh, 50 millimeter F2 Nikkor HCs. So this is it's the pre-auto indexing one. That won't go on the digital camera. Then I have an FG here, and it has a Series E 50 millimeter, and I have another FG over here that has the uh, pancake 50 millimeter that does say Nikkor on it, and nothing on this FM. And then let's see. Uh, well, the most positive lens that I'm going to look at is going to be this uh, this 50 millimeter f1.4. I put that on there, and compared to that slow lens on there, this thing really lets some light in, because I I do shooting here in my room, and it's bright outside, but then like this side of the room is the music side, and I set up and play over here and video on it, and. Uh, it helps, but you got to have a pretty fast lens to do it because unless it's like 8 o'clock in the morning where I have the sun coming in the windows, uh, later in the day this room gets kind of dark. So it looks, looks bright now because the house, the house next door is shining light, sunlight off of it. So if I want to set stuff up on the camera from here, I need to have that fast lens or something pretty close to it. Uh, so I, I use that uh, 1.4 um, and beyond that to change around I have a couple other here this this one right here is a 50 millimeter no 85 millimeter f2 and next to it I have a 35 millimeter f2 so these are just about as fast as 50 millimeter then the other stuff that starts to get a little bit slower here, this 28mm f2.8 and a one that I really like using here is a 24mm f2.8 and that's kind of my favorite video lens now. I have a 35 to 70 zoom with variable aperture, it's not a very thrilling lens. And this 135 f2.8, a 200 f2.8 and then the old standard, the uh, 80 to 200 f4.5 Nikkor with the 52 millimeter filter thread on it. That was a great lens. Um, it's, it hasn't maintained its value like uh, people like prime lenses these days. Uh, but this camera with several of those Nikkors on it can really do a lot of stuff. Now I mentioned the 24 millimeter and let me explain that so people that might not know this don't understand. With a 35 millimeter format, which we have in the background there, uh, that lens is designed to make a uh, project an image at the focal plane at the image at the focal plane of the camera at the back where where the film is. Uh, that would be inverted, but it'll be a regular, whatever it is, 22 by 36 um, millimeter uh, rectangle. Well, in these digital cameras, particularly this one, there's some are, some are, are larger format, but generally they um, have a smaller sized, um, uh, not a light meter, but a, a, a light sensitive area that is that reads the picture, the light coming in to, through the lens. But it's smaller 
in its, in its rectangular size than the image of a 35 millimeter that the camera's lenses were built to make. So what happens is that you project the full 35 millimeter image on the back of the camera, but the, the eye in, that's back there in the camera is smaller than that. So it, you cut the edges off the top and the bottom and the sides and you get a smaller picture. What, but that goes to full size. So what it does is it kind of takes your, your wide angle lenses and make them into normal lenses and takes your normal lenses and makes them into telephoto lenses and your telephoto lenses become super telephoto. Every, it's like uh, everything makes your lens longer. So with the 24 millimeter, uh, I don't know exactly what the formula is, but I'm guessing it gives you like a 32 or 33 millimeter equivalent in a 35 millimeter camera. They don't make that lens, but they do. So if you're using a 35 millimeter lens like that F2 that I have, it's going to come out as uh, probably 55 or 60 millimeters. So you're losing your angle of view when you want to be able to get an environmental shot that shows the background of where the subject is. Then you gotta, it's, it's gonna be closing in. Like when you get here, uh, I want to be able to see more of what's going in. So, you have to have a really wide angle lens to the point where I'm thinking about the 24 works pretty good. Maybe I should get a 20 millimeter lens, but I'll see. I'm going to work with the uh, with 24 millimeters more on some stuff. But that's what I've been up to lately. I've been having some good results with my first videos made with this new camera. And uh, after this video is done, this uh, this video camera is going to be left on the side uh, for auxiliary shooting and emergencies and backup cameras, stuff like that. But that's it. So I hope you enjoyed your, the video, learned some things. Let's see how the road video might go to lightweight directional microphone. And it's very easy to install on the camera. You just got to pull those little plugs out and plug stuff in. And then it's all, you're all set. So that's been what I'm up to. And tell me, how about your setup? Are you thinking about doing videos or do you do videos? What kind of camera do you use and what do you think about this? I'm a film photographer that's reluctantly graduated into... Uh, the video, the digital age of images, but uh, I still think about everything uh, in terms of film and mechanics and stuff like that. So I have to get used to having to program cameras to do stuff. So thank you for watching. Give me a, a like and a subscription it doesn't cost you anything. And you can always check on other things that I have on the video. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you on the next one. This is Mr. Gibson Guy out.